history is full of firsts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many of those firsts shaped our way of life. For 70 years, KPRC Channel 2 has been proud to be pioneers in shaping television and Houston history. Isn't it good to work for a place that has a sense of history? And indeed it is. See, taking the president from spring to Collins Station. If you have something you'd like Channel 2 Investigates to check out, call the tip line at 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at click2houston.com. This is Channel 2 News Today. Good morning. This morning, two military planes carrying American cruise ship passengers from Japan back on U.S. soil. One of them even landed in Texas. Coming up, we'll tell you what's next for the patients. Also, police in a southwest Houston neighborhood overnight because of two different scenes, a deadly crash and a house fire. We'll get details on both coming up. It's going to be a muggy start to this work week. Some people might even see some thick fog out there this Ooh. morning. Temperatures, I saw it. Temperatures in the <gasps> upper 60s right now, but you need to enjoy this while this lasts. Britt is going to time up on a cold front will make its way back to our area. All right, good morning. It's Monday the 17th at 4.30. I'm a Lincoln Flint. Good morning. I'm Tania Wright. Eric is in with a check on the roads. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, roadway's looking pretty good this morning. Overall, it is foggy, uh, mostly on the west side of town, it seems like, and that's where our only incident is. I'm not sure if they're related, but uh, I-10, Katy Freeway, outside of Katy. Uh, we'll talk about that coming up. Yeah, and always good to get the word out early that we're dealing with fog, so yes. people take their time this morning, give themselves that extra time out the door. Temperature-wise, you don't have to worry about grabbing a coat. It is warm. In fact, many of you will probably have to turn on the AC later this afternoon inside your house. We are waking up in the 60s, and there's a live look at the Southwest Freeway. Yep, it's pretty soupy out there. Uh, temperatures right now on the southwest side, generally in the low 60s. We're at 61 degrees of Bush Airport. To the north of town, also in the low 60s in Montgomery County. Conroe, good morning to you. You're at 61 degrees degrees and we're at 64 degrees currently at the coast in Galveston. So here's a look at the visibility map. Again, we are seeing some very thick fog on the west side, but it's even translating up towards, you know, Bush Airport. We're down to a half mile, not looking too bad on the south side from the south portion of the beltway over towards Hobby. Your visibility is at about five miles. We're looking pretty good at the coast as well. So in these pockets where you see the thick fog, make sure that you're using your low beams and you're taking it slow. Here's a look at your day. We're going to warm up. We're not going to have a lot of sunshine today, mostly cloudy skies skies and you might see an isolated shower mainly in the afternoon, but we're getting up to 78 degrees. It's going to be warm, muggy and breezy. We're working up towards a cold front, Eric. So coming up, I'll time out that cold front and let you know what we're expecting behind it. Over to you. All right, very good. Britta, looking like a bad day. A little fog for you early this morning, so if you do have to get out, if you have to work on this President's Day, or uh, you just have to get out of the house for whatever reason, and you're hitting the roads west side of town, it looks like that's where the fog is the thickest right now, and that's where we have our only incident. Not sure if the two are related, but vehicle fire. Three cars involved in this. It is on the eastbound side of things on I-10, right near Brookshire, FM 359. So it's west of Katy. All main lanes are blocked right now. You can see the freeway is closed down at this particular 
intersection. Fortunately, traffic very, very light right here, but check out the fog in this particular location. You can see what's going on here. Uh, it's hard to even make out what's happening, but this is just west of where the accident was happening right here at FM 1489. Uh, elsewhere on I-10 at, at Greenhouse, this is just east of Katy. It's a little bit better. You've got slightly more visibility. Uh, and then on the east side of town, much less in the way of fog. It's actually looking pretty good. The East Freeway at Normandy, both directions looking fine. And you can see all the way to the horizon. Take a look at your current drive times. We are looking good. 21 minutes and from Katy, that accident is to the west of Katy, so it's not factored into that number. And we're in the green delay free elsewhere. Back to you. All right, Eric, thank you. Uh, 433 right now, new this morning. Deadly crash in the southwest Houston neighborhood. Uh, police say a driver had been drinking and crashed into a tree there. Apparently, the man got into an argument last night and then took off in his truck, driving up and down Mackinac Street near Post Oak Road, and then lost control and slammed into a tree at the neighbor's house, and it killed him. Uh, we're told nobody else was in the truck. In the same neighborhood, then a fire broke out uh, overnight. One resident and one firefighter were rushed to the hospital. The home, again, Mackinac Street near Post Oak Road. Fire crews say they arrived to find the home consumed by smoke. Uh, they quickly put out the fire. One resident was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. So was a firefighter, uh, but authorities say his injuries were actually unrelated to the fire. Now to a story you'll only see right here on two. A woman is in the hospital this morning after being shot on the Southwest Freeway. Now her worried parents tell us that this was all because of road rage and the shooter has not yet been caught. Channel 2 Sally Mamdu has the terrifying details. The victim's family tells me that the victim was just trying to exit this highway here right behind me when all of a sudden a driver fired at her car. It was a terrifying call for Cheryl Fisher and her husband, Boris. She was like crying, screaming, does someone do something at her? And she couldn't feel her leg. You know, me and my husband, we jumped up to try and like, hey, where's what's your location? Let us so we can get to you. We're coming, we're coming. And I could hear others in the background saying, you've been shot. Their daughter, 24-year-old Jalisa Fisher, had been shot as she was trying to exit Highway 59 near Chimney Rock. Police say while Jalisa was heading northbound on 59, attempting to exit the freeway, she cut off another vehicle believed to have been a BMW. Jalisa's parents then say the driver who was coming from West Park Tollway got behind her, then next to her. The next thing she know, the car got on the side of her and she really wasn't paying the car any attention. And then it's like she just thought something was thrown at her car and her leg was burning. The bullet went through her car door and into the back of her left leg, sending her to the hospital. The pain was just so bad because the bullet split the bone in her leg, so her leg broke. Cheryl Fisher and her husband are hoping the person behind the shooting is caught soon. You've interrupted her life right now. You could have ended her life. The family tells me the victim is recovering at Memorial Hermann, and now police are searching for this driver. Anyone with information should call Houston police. In Southwest Houston, Sally Mabdu, KPRC, Channel 2 News. 436 now in the coronavirus crisis. Two charter flights carrying cruise ship passengers from Japan arrived back on U.S. soil overnight. The plane landed at a California Air Force Base. Another flight just landed at the Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio. And uh, in all, the two planes carried nearly 400 Americans back to the United States. This group faces yet another quarantine for two weeks. Japanese officials have confirmed 99 more people infected by the new virus aboard the quarantined cruise ship Diamond Princess which brings the total to 454. About 380 Americans had been on the ship. Those who did not take the flight will stay on the cruise ship until the authorities end the quarantine there in uh, Japan, which should end on Wednesday. Another town hall meeting is set for today to help the people working to recover from the deadly Watson explosion. Homeowners who suffered from that explosion are invited to attend that meeting that is going to be held at Chavez Mexican Rest Cafe, excuse me, along Gessner in Northwest Houston. The meeting is going to be from five until eight o'clock again today. Two people were killed in that explosion. City leaders say 450 structures were damaged. SpaceX is getting ready for another launch today. Yeah, coming up with their open ascend into space and why they had to cancel yesterday's mission. Britta, good morning. Good morning. We are waking up to fog. Temperatures in the 60s, so give yourself that extra time out the door, but don't worry about bundling up. It's going to be a warm day. We're looking at temperatures getting close to the upper 70s this afternoon, but it's all coming to a crashing end towards the end of the work week. Yes, we have a cold front on the way. We'll time out those showers coming up. Thank you, Britta. A tow yard employee in Oregon survives a violent robbery.
I heard the engine just rev up, and then next thing I know, I'm flying through the air. You saw it right there. Surprisingly, he hopped right back up. What he did next, straight ahead. Time right now, 438. It's sleep. Good morning, your time is 440. Here's a live look at the Southwest Freeway. Kind of hard to make out much. We do have thick fog in the area. Looks like most of it is to the west of Interstate 45, but this is going to ebb and flow throughout the morning, so make sure you take that extra caution. We're down to a half mile at Bush Airport, a quarter of a mile in Katy, so be careful coming in from Waller County and also Fort Bend County. Meanwhile, the coast looking pretty good for right now. Temperature wise, we're in the 60s. It is a very warm start. It's going to be a warm afternoon, and we have a few shower chances as we head into the afternoon. Tonight, I'll be back with a look at that. Over to you. All right, thank you, Britta. In Oregon, a tow yard employee is injured after two people stole a pickup truck right in the middle of the night. Well, they slammed into the employee and sent him flying through the air. Josh Durrett says it happened seconds after he went to unlock the gate. He says after he was hit, I guess adrenaline pumping, he jumped up and went after the person in the truck. Hopefully get that window open and pull him out, but yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> uh, I got some bruising. Uh, uh, bruised ribs, uh, chest plate is pretty bruised up too. Uh, I'm, I'm just happy to be alive, to be honest. No kidding, he could have been crushed between those two trucks. Police later caught and arrested one of the two suspects. The company says the truck had just been towed a few hours before. It would have cost uh, just $339 to have it released instead of uh, what they'll have to go through now. Uh, 441, top stories around the nation. The race to the White House running through Nevada this week. Early voting got underway this weekend. It wraps up Tuesday. The caucuses there, they do caucuses there. They're Saturday. Uh, meantime, Democratic candidates are traveling throughout the state trying to build support. There's another debate Wednesday hosted by uh, NBC and MSNBC. Recent national polls don't yet show a particular favorite uh, among the Democratic candidates in the state of Nevada. Maybe the debate will change that before the caucuses. So just a reminder, early voting in Texas Texas for the March 3rd primary elections begins Tuesday and runs until Friday, February 28th. Today, SpaceX is planning to launch its fifth batch of Starlink satellites. This is video right here from last month's mission. Its Falcon 9 is scheduled to lift off at 9 a.m. at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. The mission was supposed to happen yesterday, but SpaceX called it off because of some hardware issues. That launch is part of SpaceX's goal to provide internet coverage to the world. Harvey Weinstein will soon learn his fate. The jury in the trial is expected to start deliberation, uh, deliberations Tuesday. The 67-year-old is charged with five counts, including rape, predatory sexual assault, criminal sexual assault. Weinstein denies all the allegations. Rising waters in Mississippi threatening the state now. One river is expected to crest today. Coming up at 5, what residents are doing to protect themselves. And the big issue this morning for you is going to be the fog. Southwest Freeway, Brazos River, you can see some haze in the air there, mainly west side of town. But we'll take a look at some of our cameras and take a look at our drive times from across Houston, let you know what you're going to be facing on your morning drive this morning. Number 24 was on everyone's minds at the All-Star Game for the NBA over the weekend. The touching tributes to Kobe Bryant coming up on Channel 2 News today. today. Good morning. Time right now is 445 on a Monday morning. Live look outside. You can see all that fog out there. A lot of people could be seeing fog this morning. We're going to have your full forecast coming up in just a few moments. We are following some breaking news right now. Two charter flights carrying cruise ship passengers from Japan have now arrived back on U.S. soil overnight. As you can see, live picture right here. This one just landed at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio. Again, live look from that plane. People on board were on those cruise ships that people, they were quarantined for a while because of the coronavirus. Now, in all, two planes carried nearly 400 Americans back to the U.S., and this group faces yet another quarantine, and that will once again be two weeks. Switching gears now, the Houston Roughnecks put on uh, quite the show during the team's second game. Uh, also, the Astros still on the defensive over the sign-stealing scandal. Here's Ari Alexander. 
Welcome into the Xfinity Sports Desk. Good morning. The Houston Astros apology tour this week was not well received. Apologies once again open the team to criticism from 29 other teams in Major League Baseball who have had varied negative responses. One of those responses coming from Dodgers pitcher Ross Stripling, who told reporters Friday he would consider throwing at Astros hitters in retaliation for the sign stealing scandal if needed. Dodgers and Astros don't play this year, but MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred talked Sunday and warned teams against throwing at hitters. I hope, I hope that I made it extremely clear to them that retaliation in game by throwing at a batter intentionally will not be tolerated, whether it's Houston or anybody else. It's dangerous and it is not helpful to the current situation. Rough next game two at TDECU Stadium. The fans are out wearing their, where do you get hard hats? Like, where do you even buy those? Up 15 to six, P.J. Walker, corner of the end zone. That's a little one-two step. Touchdown, Cam Phillips. Later, P.J. Walker on the RPO. Little run pass option. Zips it to Phillips again. Three touchdowns for Cam Phillips. Rough next win, 28-24. They are 2-0 and and a leg up on the inaugural XFL championship, possibly, which will be in Houston, by the way. That's all for sports, and if you don't know, now you know. Yes, we do. Thank you, Ari. Well, it's been a weekend of really touching tributes for Kobe Bryant. Players, fans, and celebrities honored him at the NBA All-Star Ceremonies in Chicago. Grammy winner Jennifer Hudson wore Lakers purple as she performed a pregame tribute to Bryant and sang, For All We Know. Players on LeBron James's team wore Bryant's daughter Gianna's number two on their jersey. And players on Team Giannis wore Kobe's number 24 on theirs. All of those players wore a patch with nine stars, one for each victim of that helicopter crash. Rapper Common also paid homage to Bryant in his pregame tribute to Chicago, saying that even in the darkest times, you'll feel Kobe's light. Team LeBron, though, won the All-Star game by just two points. The fourth quarter was just as intense as the final moments of a playoff game. Anthony Davis made the game-ending free throw to give his team a 157-155 win. I know, it was pretty rough, I hear. James Harden and Russell Westbrook competed together on Team LeBron. They celebrated the victory with students from the Chicago Scholar Charity. Coming up next, they are going to hit the road to play Golden State. That game's on Thursday. Daytona 500 was uh, a wash yesterday, thanks to Mother Nature. The race is uh, supposed to continue today at uh, 3 o'clock this afternoon. Heavy rain set in just after uh, 20 official laps. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. was uh, in the lead. The racetrack hopes to dry out. They're going to hopefully dry it out by today. This is only the second postponement in the race's 62-year history. Britta, what did you do yesterday? <laughs> you, you let it, you let it wow. rain. I was just in a bad mood. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> now everybody that's a fan is going to write me an email. Thanks for doing nice that. Job. Yeah, this no, is your fault. I had nothing to do with yeah. it. Uh, but you know what? It happens, right? You got to keep everybody Once in 60, safe. Twice in 62 years. It exactly. Happens. So it's not too bad of yeah, a record. Um, let's not do any of that style of driving this morning. You want to <laughs> no. slow it down, make job for Eric a little easier. Uh, we do have fog this morning, so you want to take that extra caution. And you do not need to worry about grabbing your winter coat. It's going to be very warm today. In fact, we're waking up in the 60s. That's a live look right. at our city camera, our Kaplan Sinus Relief camera. So, you know, definitely uh, up in the fog, as we like to say. Uh, you want to make sure that you're using your low beams, taking it slow. We're at 61 degrees currently here at Channel 2 on the southwest side of town. Uh, we do have visibility that's dropping down to a half a mile on the southwest side. The thickest visibility really to the west of Interstate 45, with the exception of Bush Airport, where you're down to about a half mile. But you're looking much better on the east side. Your visibility from Hobby Airport down closer to the coast, not looking bad. I am starting to see that Galveston, though, you're dropping. You had completely clear skies about two hours ago. Now you're dropping down to about a half mile. That sea fog is right offshore. This afternoon will be at 78 degrees. Do not expect a lot of sunshine. We'll have mostly cloudy skies and we do have a 20% chance of a stray shower. We'll keep it mainly dry this morning just dealing with the fog. We'll see improvements with the fog after 9 o'clock in the morning and then in the afternoon with that heat of the day just a stray shower possible. If you get caught it is going to be fairly light. We're not expecting too much today. A greater chance of rain is coming for the middle part of the work week. That's when a weather system that is right now moving into the Colorado 
Colorado Rockies will hop over the Rockies and get its act together. So it's going to throw a cold front in our direction for Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. So Wednesday and Thursday looks to be the rainiest days. And behind this system, we have a batch of cooler air. So the first half of the work week, very spring like the second half of the work week, very winter like. So we're going from the 70s right back down to the 50s for Thursday and Friday. Again, Wednesday and Thursday will be the west day out of the bunch with that cold front rolling through. Then we clear out the skies for this weekend and Mardi Gras weekend shaping up pretty nicely. I mean, Eric, we're going to have some cooler temperatures mornings in the 40s, afternoons in the 60s, but at least we'll have nice sunny skies for all the parades. Over to you. All right. Overall, not looking like a bad forecast. If we have to get the wet weather out of the way, let's do it during the work week. All right. As Britta mentioned, west of Interstate 45, that's where the heaviest fog seems to be. That's where we have our only incident. Whether they're linked or not, I'm not sure. But on I-10, this is right near Brookshire, uh, right in Brookshire, actually, at FM uh, 359. We have a vehicle fire. They're cleaning up after it. It's hard to tell. But this is FM 1489 camera. It's literally like one block to the west of where this incident is. You can see through the fog barely but you can see the traffic is backed up here uh, so yeah it will take some time for folks getting into town from outside the Brookshire area now elsewhere things are fairly quiet out there Northwest Freeway Spring Cypress visibility a little bit better but the fog still is there so bear that in mind and uh, take it slow on your way to work right now though your drive times in from pretty much every suburb is uh, well we're delay free so looking good back to you all right, thank you, Eric. Time right now is 4.53 this morning. Here's a look at what's trending. The internet has uh, some mixed feelings about Shaka Khan's performance of the national anthem at last night's NBA All-Star Game. Some people thought it was a soulful rendition and unique, but others less impressed. Take a listen for yourself. Well, the moment reminded people online when pop star Fergie performed the national anthem at the 2018 All-Star Game. Wow. wow. Her rendition uh, wasn't received too well either. Shaka Khan's like an icon. I know. I feel like you got to let the whole song play before I know. you actually make it. Make your uh, judgment on that. Mr. and Mrs. Kaylee Watt. Kay Kaylee. It's Kaylee, right? I always mess up her name. Kaylee. Kaylee. Oh, hi. Now Kaylee Watt. Uh, the couple, the newlywed couple, like sharing some photos online uh, from the weekend wedding, smooching, dressed down, by the way, in their cozy post-wedding outfits. Everybody's yeah, JJ and Grandma getting down on the dance floor, showing everyone how it's done. One of the topics was that they, they changed out of their, you know, the, the classic dress and to a, suit. a leisure. Yeah, I don't know what y'all think about that, but uh, it's people way more, are sharing their comments. Way more comfortable. Facebook, so. All right, it's a dance craze making its way across social media. Coming up at five, we're gonna have a look at the teen who actually created the renegade that is exploding now on TikTok. Good morning. Allow for that extra travel time this morning. We are tracking fog. So that is a live look at the Southwest Freeway. Uh, most of our fog really to the west of Interstate 45. You're down to about a half mile to a quarter mile in locations coming in from Katy, also moving in from the Sugarland area. Uh, we'll take a look at what we're expecting for the rest of your work week coming up at our five o'clock show, which starts in just a few minutes. Stay with us. KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. This morning, our cops are looking for a driver who shot a woman on the Southwest Freeway in a road rage incident. We're going to hear from the woman's family who says they just want justice for their daughter. And we're seeing some pretty thick fog out there right now, so make sure you plan some extra time for your morning commute. Britta is tracking it, as well as the chance of some light showers later today. All right, good morning. It's uh, 5 o'clock now on Monday, the 17th of February. I'm Owen Conflenti. Good morning. I'm Tanaya Wright. Eric is in with a check on the road. So how are we looking so far? We're looking pretty good. Uh, in town, just fine. We have an accident kind of on the outskirts. We're uh, looking at a car fire cleanup in the Brookshire area on I-10, uh, which has got all main lanes blocked, but the backup is small okay. right now. So. 
we'll give you the update on that, plus a look at your drive times coming up. Nice, and it's a bit foggy out there. Yes, but not everywhere. So it looks like the southeast side not looking too bad, but if you're to the west of Interstate 45, it's pretty soupy. Give yourself that extra time, slow down your speeds, use your low beams, all those good tips. Let's take a look at the southwest freeway. Yeah, a little murky out there. Uh, Temperature-wise, it's pretty mild. We're waking up in the 60s. It is going to be a warm, muggy, breezy day. We're looking at the upper 70s this afternoon. Meanwhile, our visibility is down to a half mile coming in from Sugarland, a quarter of a mile in Tomball, no of Brazoria County moving up towards Galveston County, the southeast side, not looking too bad with the exception of the direct coast. We do have some sea fog right along seawall. So Galveston, your visibility is down to about a quarter of a mile. Now we are going to see some improvements as we go into the afternoon. Here's a look at our fog future cast. By the time we get to 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, the fog is out of here. And then this afternoon, we'll have uh, mainly clear conditions in terms of fog, but we will have mostly cloudy skies. Not a lot of sunshine in this forecast, but at least we do have the warm up. 78 degrees, we do have straight showers that are possible as we go into the afternoon. Eric, a lot of rain is heading in our direction. I'll time that out coming up. All right, but it looks like not a lot of it today. Uh, the only thing we have to deal with today is fog, plus an accident on the west side of town. The fog seems to be thickest on the west side where you see the uh, yellow shading. That's where the fog is really being detected uh, on our computer system. Uh, we do have this car fire. It is um, being cleaned up right now. It happened on I-10 eastbound at FM 359. This is in the Berkshire area. This camera shot right here is at FM 1489. That's right here, so it's just behind this accident. You can see in the lower left hand corner of the backup associated with this a lot of fog in this area. Not sure if the fog had anything to do with this particular accident, but certainly it was a hazard in that particular location. North Freeway on the other hand is looking pretty good by comparison. A little bit hazy certainly, but not many cars on the roads. Visibility is much better uh, as it is in most other places around town. The fog rather patchy. Right now inbound drive times from all of our major suburbs on all of our big arteries. Delayed free at this hour. If you happen to be leaving right now, just take it easy because of the fog, but you should do okay. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Eric. Major League Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred has been criticized the past month. This is all for how he's handling the Astros sign stealing scandal. Manfred's defending himself and his decision to give the Astros players immunity and not to strip the team of their World Series title from 2017. Vincent Crivelli is in the studio with us this morning with more on what the commissioner had to say. Vincent, good morning. Owen Tanaya, good morning. The commissioner said he could not have done a full investigation without giving players immunity so they would talk openly. Meanwhile, players are going back and forth making threats, but the commissioner is making it clear he won't tolerate pitchers trying to hit Houston batters. I don't think there's a player in Major League Baseball who relishes the idea of being a 2017 Houston Astro and out there answering questions about exactly what happened and why it happened. The Astro sign stealing scandal is a hot topic across Major League Baseball for fans and players. Commissioner Manfred giving a word of warning. I hope, I hope that I made it extremely clear to them that retaliation in game by throwing at a batter intentionally will not be tolerated, whether it's Houston or anybody else. It's the term for pegging a batter is called beanballing. It's dangerous and it is not helpful to the current situation. Manfred says baseball officials discussed the possibility of vacating the Astros 2017 World Championship, but said removing the title would be a futile act. They have been hurt by this. Uh, they will live with questions about what went on in 2017 and 2018 for the rest of their lives. And frankly, it's rare that for any offense, you have a punishment that you will live with for the rest of your life. And the commissioner went on to say league policy changed to make sure a similar situation doesn't happen again. Owen Tanaya, back to you. All right, Vince, appreciate it. Uh, meantime, Astros getting ready for the first full team workout of spring training today. We'll get more on that from our Randy McElvoy coming up at 5.30. It's 5.04 here at Channel 2. New this morning, a fire in southwest Houston uh, at a home overnight that broke out. One resident and one firefighter had to be rushed to the hospital. The home's at Mackinac Street near South Post Oak. Fire crews arrived to find the home consumed with smoke. They were quickly able to put the fire out. One resident was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. The firefighter, as I mentioned, was also taken in, uh, but they say his injuries were unrelated to the fire. 
Man was gunned down at an apartment complex stairwell last night, and now investigators say the suspects who killed him still on the run right now. This happened at the Haverstock Hill Apartments on Aldine Bender and Lee. Deputies say the victim was being chased by two men and then was shot in the back of the head on that stairwell as he was trying to get away. The suspects then sped off in a dark colored vehicle. Deputies say their investigation became even more complicated when a large group of people showed up at the crime scene. Uh, we have uh, numerous people that claim to be family members that really aren't family members. We have witnesses that claim to see things when they didn't, and we have witnesses that actually saw what happened that don't want to talk to us when there's a large crowd gathered out in front of the scene. Investigators are now working to figure out exactly what led up to that shooting. A woman shot in the leg during a road rage incident. Now police are looking for the person that pulled the trigger. 24-year-old Jaleesa Fisher says she cut off a, a BMW or something that looked really like it at uh, the Southwest Freeway 59 and Chimney Rock exit early yesterday morning. She says then she heard a boom and realized she had been shot in the leg. While her family's speaking about this, they say they want justice for their daughter. The pain was just so bad because the bullet split the bone in her leg, so her leg broke. You've interrupted her life right now. You could have ended her life. So uh, Jaleesa is still recovering in the hospital from the shooting. Anyone with information on that car, either the BMW or what it looked like, it, call Houston Police. Time right now is 5.06 this morning. Worshippers gathered at a local church to honor a gospel singer who died in a car crash last week. LaTanya Earl died when wet concrete fell from a truck and caused a driver to crash head on into Earl's vehicle. She was 50 years old. The other driver, a 19-year-old man, died as well. Details for Earl's funeral have already been announced. Now, we are told there is going to be a viewing on Friday at 5 p.m. There will also be a remembrance service starting at 10 a.m. on Saturday. All of these events will be held at the Church at Bethel's family. Happening today, a memorial service for a Sugarland mother and son killed inside of their home. Police say Richard Logan shot and killed his wife Diana as well as their son Aaron before driving to San Marcos where he physically assaulted his daughter and then committed suicide. The service for the Logan family is going to be held at 2 o'clock this afternoon at the River Point Church. Relief for a Houston family this morning. A boy who was taken when the car he was in was stolen from a parking lot has made it home safe. Now Houston police are asking for the public's help to find the man responsible for all this. Investigators say five-year-old Richard Banaheen was sleeping in the back seat while his mom ran in to cash a check. Well, while she ran in, the car was stolen and then found abandoned about five hours later, a mile away. Thankfully, a passerby spotted the uh, car while driving. I was driving on the side of the freeway and I noticed uh, the, the 09 model Toyota Camry. So I said, let me make sure. And I saw uh, a small child with a yellow shirt. It fit the description of the child that we're looking for. Investigators now searching for the man in the surveillance footage. If you have any information on him, he was originally in that the GMC Yukon. You're asked to call Houston police. It's 508. In honor of President's Day, the National Museum of Funeral History in Houston is honoring the 41st president. The museum is going to open the highly anticipated George H.W. Bush Memorial today. Now, this is the exhibit. It will focus on the lives of George and Barbara Bush, along with their funeral services, as well as the now famous 4141 funeral train. Tickets are $10 for adults and $7 for children. All right, just in this morning, the plane carrying evacuees from a Japanese cruise ship, which had been docked in Japan for days, uh, they've landed in San Antonio. That's right, still ahead at five. What officials are saying about the 14 people with coronavirus found on that plane? And hear from a couple who have been recording their entire experience on board that cruise ship. And this morning, we are waking up to fog. Give yourself that extra travel time. Here's a live look at the Southwest Freeway, and temperatures right now are generally in the 60s. Very mild start to our work week, but big changes on the way. We do have a midweek cold front. We'll time out those rain showers coming up. All right, Britta. And uh, coming up next, have you seen the happy couple yet? If you were, if you were uh, off of social media all weekend, we'll catch you up on Mr. and Mrs. Kaylee Watts' wedding over the weekend, 509. Then future. 
Good morning. Your time is 5:11. Here is a live look at the Southwest Freeway. A little soupy out there. We are waking up to fog, so give yourself that extra time. Most of it is to the west of Interstate 45, but we are seeing that sea fog creep in at the coast. So Galveston, your visibility is down to a quarter of a mile. We'll see some improvements with the fog between 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. Then we could see a few spotty showers. So grab your umbrella. Temperatures are very mild this morning in the 60s. I'm not anticipating too much rain this morning, and even this afternoon, it's only a slight chance. Take a look at what happens between lunch time and about three o'clock in the afternoon for after school pickup. Just a few spotty showers across the area. Those rain chances, they are going up, especially for Wednesday and Thursday. We'll take a look at a midweek cold front coming up. Owen. Okay, Britta. So uh, JJ Watt still sharing some beautiful photos from his destination wedding with former Houston Dash player Kaylee Ojai. The company. The co company. <laughs> Jeez Louise, sorry. It's, couple, her, it's Monday. <laughs> a couple. That's a good excuse for it. the couple tied the knot Saturday in the Bahamas. They announced their engagement uh, last May after dating a few years, and uh, JJ captioned his uh, Twitter post with "Best day of my life." without question, until they have kids one day. Exactly. Then it just gets better, believe it or not. Gorgeous photos. Well, the Daytona 500 will continue today, and this is why it was postponed due to heavy rain. Before that rain, though, President Trump served as the race's grandmaster. He and First Lady Melania Trump took a ceremonial lap around the track in their limo. Right after that, though, the rain caused the first delay. Then the competition, you see, got underway for a little bit but it only lasted 20 laps. The heavy rain came back. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. was in the lead when that race was postponed. Well, evacuations are underway this morning in Mississippi after major flooding hit that area over the weekend. It's coming up, how long officials believe it could take for the water to recede? It's 5:13. That thing. Day.com today. Good morning. Coming up on 516 on this Monday morning, another town hall meeting is happening today for those people who are still recovering from the deadly Watson explosion. People who suffered from the explosion are invited to attend a meeting that is going to be held at Chavez Mexican Cafe right along Gessner in northwest Houston. This is going to be from 5 until 8 o'clock this evening. Two people were killed in that explosion. City leaders say some 450 homes and businesses were also damaged. The criminal trial against chemical plant Arkema and three of its employees over fires at the company's Crosby plant is set to begin today. The company is accused of causing a release of air pollution during Hurricane Harvey. Arkema's North America CEO and plant manager face up to five years in prison. Last year, their vice president of logistics was also charged after he was accused of causing bodily injury to two Harris County Sheriff's deputies who were treated for chemical burns. The firm could also face a million dollar fine. Well, there's news out of Iran. Iran's president, Hassan Rouhani, is talking about the ongoing tension with the United States, saying the U.S. wouldn't go to war with Iran because, in his opinion, it would hurt the president's re-election bid. Rouhani says... The U.S. president knows war with Iran would ruin his chances of winning. Tehran and Washington came close to an open conflict in January when a U.S. drone strike outside Baghdad killed Iran's top general. Iran retaliated with missile strikes on a, US, on a base rather in Iraq housing U.S. troops. Search crews in Colorado are now recovering the bodies of two men who were killed in an avalanche near Vail. Another person was with them, and they were able to dig themselves out of that snow there. This tragic accident comes after the Colorado Avalanche Info Center posted a warning. That warning saying some very large avalanches are propagating in surprising and unpredictable ways. Even the rescue effort was a risk, with rescue workers telling volunteers to go home before the men had been found. It was seemed like it might be too too late, too little too late, but you know, there could be an air pocket. There's always a chance of survival. And there have been six skiing related deaths in Colorado so far this year. The federal government will fund big moves to prevent western wildfires. The Bureau of Land Management has announced plans to fund 11,000 miles of strategic fuel breaks in five states. Breaks in vegetation that would slow down a blaze's progress. They're going to go up in Idaho, Oregon, Washington, California, Nevada, and Utah. Between 2009 and 2018, more than 13.5 million acres of uh, BLM land burned in that region. 
After days of heavy rain, there's rising waters in Mississippi threatening that state. That's right. Now residents there are being warned to evacuate from some areas. Forecasters expect the Pearl River to crest at 38 feet, which is the highest level since the 1980s. Some roads and homes you can see already underwater. The governor there now declaring a state of emergency. As we continue to monitor radar and weather reports, we do not anticipate this situation to end anytime soon. We do not want to lose anyone as we respond to what is expected to continue to be historic flood levels. Forecasters say they believe this could be several days before those floodwaters start to retreat. Boy, oh boy. Scary situation. What a time, Britta. Yeah. Ugh, unfortunately, we all know how that goes, so it's going to be a long process to clean that up. Uh, weather here in town, very quiet this morning, but we are waking up to fog, so take that extra caution, especially, you know, with that risk of running any accidents, you want to be on top of your driving game today. Uh, that's a live look at our Kaplan Situs Relief Camera. This is an elevated camera, so you're kind of up in the cloud deck, but we do have fog reaching down to the streets. Uh, Temperature-wise, it's mild out there. We're in the 60s, and it's going to be a warm and breezy day, so don't worry about grabbing a coat this morning if you forget it you're going to be just fine. Uh, if you draw a line, generally along 45, definitely to the west of Interstate 45, we have lower visibility and a larger issue with the fog. We're down to a quarter of a mile in Katy right now. Similar conditions in Tomball. And I'm also seeing the sea fog really start to push in along 45 in Galveston County. So Galveston itself, you're down to a quarter of a mile. We'll see some improvements with the fog between 10 and 11 o'clock in the morning. But don't expect to see a lot of sunshine today. Mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures getting up to 78 degrees we do have a slight chance of an afternoon shower if you get caught it's going to be light about a 20 percent chance of rain a pause o'clock at school drop off most of us completely dry but we are still dealing with the fog at eight o'clock in the morning so watch the school zones really take your time and watch out for the kids once we get after lunchtime, a few spotty showers are possible but you can see how minimal it is if you get caught it's going to be a light passing shower your rain chance kind of closes up around the evening time frame and then we have higher rain chances moving in towards the middle part of the work week we're watching this weather system that's still in the Rockies. It's going to take its time to hop over the Rockies and head in our direction, but it's going to drag a cold front through here. The main time frame for Wednesday into Thursday. The cold front itself is moving through Tuesday night, but it looks like Wednesday and Thursday, a higher chance of rain as we have a few systems riding along that boundary as it sags down to the south. As we go towards the end of the work week behind that cold front, you'll notice a big drop in temperatures. So we're going from spring like weather right back down to winter. Eric 50s moving in for the end of the work week. A uh, typical winter up down with the temperatures in and out with the rain. A little mixed bag. Seems like every single 10-day forecast for this season. All right, take a look at what's going on. We've got this uh, vehicle fire and crash. It's three cars total involved in this. This is on the west side of town, I-10, going eastbound through Brookshire. The accident happened at 359, FM 359. We're looking at the camera here on the inset at FM 1489. That's right here. So you're looking at the backup associated with this accident. Feeder Road is the alternate route to get around this, but the freeway itself is closed. Uh, all main lanes being blocked as they continue to clean up with this accident right here. Now, take a look at the big picture. Highway 288, Alameda, Genoa, uh, is a little hazy, but you can see traffic moving along on the south side of town, overall looking pretty good there. And on the uh, east side of town, Highway 225 at Underwood, less in the way of fog. The fog seems to be more of a problem on the east side of town. And your overall drive times, here they are. We are still looking delay-free despite the fact that we have the fog. This 21 minutes in from Katy, uh, remember that that the accident is to the west of Katy, so this drive time here does not factor in that accident in Brookshire Waller County. Drive safely out there and remember, give yourself a little extra time this morning. Back to you. Thank you, Eric. We are tracking the fog this morning across the area that could be causing some troubles on your morning commute. A live look right now at some of the conditions that you could see when you head out the door on this Monday. We're just tracking the visibility as you make your way to work. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Tanaya. Our society is addicted to sugar. The main thing you need to eat more of when decreasing that sugar ahead. Five candidates have qualified for the Democratic debate Wednesday, but could there be one more? I'm Tracy Potts. NTB. All right, back at 526, Decision 2020, less than a week away from the next contest in the presidential election uh, and two days away from the next debate. Here's Tracy Potts from Washington. Oh, and good morning. Good morning, everyone. Narrowing the field. That's what's happening as they head into Nevada with the Democrats now starting to turn on each other. 
Most of Nevada's 48 delegates will be decided in Saturday's caucuses. Early voting is underway. This week, this is going to be a bar, barn burn. Pete Buttigieg with the delegate lead after New Hampshire slamming conservative critics of gay marriage. I'm proud of my husband, and I'm not going to be lectured on family values from the likes of Rush Limbaugh or anybody who supports Donald J. Trump. Health care is huge here. Buttigieg siding with union workers who want to keep their private plans, while sending Senator Elizabeth Warren explains how to pay for Medicare for all. And we can go after the tax cheats at the top end. Senator Bernie Sanders is under fire for supporters threatening union workers who don't like his plan. If any of my supporters did that, I'd disown them. Flat disown them. Find out who the hell they are. If any of them work for me. Fire him. Find out. All four joined Senator Amy Klobuchar at Wednesday's debate, many of them ganging up on billionaire Michael Bloomberg's record with women and minorities. I am on your show right now, Margaret, answering these tough questions. Where is he? He just keeps running a bunch of ads. Spending hundreds of millions of dollars trying to buy an election. Bloomberg tweeting, I will always be a champion for women in the workplace. Bloomberg has until tomorrow to qualify for that debate. In Washington, Tracy Potts, KPRC Channel 2 News. Tracy, thanks. It's one of the most popular dances on uh, social media right now. It's called the Renegade. If you're not on TikTok like you would be, I don't know why you would be. But uh, anyway, this is it. And they found the actual person who created Charlie D'Amelio did not create this, kids. Uh, Amy Davis, good morning. Good morning. I want to see more of that dance, you though. You know, wedding and prom season, both just months away. I'm consumer expert Amy Davis. Why the coronavirus in China could determine which dress you'll wear. I'll explain coming up. And time saver traffic, good news on the Katy Freeway. This is in Brookshire, FM 1489. We had traffic moving. It looks like it slowed down a little bit, but they are making progress on an accident that had all main lanes blocked eastbound in this particular area. We'll take a closer look coming up at the bottom of the hour. Stay with us, Britta. And we'll let you know when the fog will be out of here, what we're expecting for this afternoon, and when you will be grabbing your umbrella. Your forecast is coming up. Renegade, renegade. <laughs> Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. Good morning. We've got some breaking news to tell you about this morning. An accident between an 18-wheeler and a car at I-10 near FM 359 causing some major backups. As you can see, this is in the Brookshire area. We'll tell you what we know about this accident so far. I'm tracking fog across the area, too. It could be causing trouble uh, for other folks. Here's a live look from our storm tracker this morning. And Britta is right here standing next to us. We also have the uh, visibility map up on the screen if you'd like to take a look at that. And she'll time it out for us. Eric Braid is on traffic. That uh, I-10 out there, what's going on? Uh, yeah, we have an accident. It was a three-car pileup, uh, vehicle fire. So a lot going on out there. Um, and it looked like things had been cleared out. But there's a delay back there again. I'm thinking that we're nearing the end of it because it happened before 3 o'clock this morning. So they've been working to get this cleaned up for a while, but there is still a little bit of a delay. We'll take a closer look here in just a second. But it is really foggy out there, so I don't yeah. know if that had anything to do with the accident or not. It is, and I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, we don't know for sure, but it's one of those mornings that you want to make sure that you're on top of your game, giving yourself that extra time, and just slowing down your speeds. Uh, so we do have a dense fog advisory that was just issued by the National Weather Service. Not too surprised there, as we do have many spots that have their visibility dropping below a quarter of a mile. So let's take a live look from our tower camera. Pardon me, this is our Kaplan Sinus Relief camera. Now this is an elevated camera. You're up in the cloud deck, but we have fog that is extending all the way down to the surface of the road. So take that extra caution. Your visibility is down to a quarter of a mile in Tomball, a half mile at Bush Airport. It definitely is a larger issue if you live to the west of Interstate 45, but we're also seeing it creep up the Gulf Freeway. That sea fog is moving in from Galveston. So a few things working here. When are we going to see a break? Well, on our fog Futurecast model between 10 and 11 o'clock in the morning. That's when we start to see some improvements. There are going to be a few spots that don't clear out until closer to about 11 o'clock in the morning, but then we're off to a good afternoon. Not going to see a lot of sunshine this afternoon, maybe just a few breaks. Temperatures will be warm and mild. We're expecting the upper 70s today, and we do have a chance of a few afternoon showers. We'll take a look at that rain chance in more detail coming up. Eric, over to you. 
All right, Britta, thank you very much. Time saver traffic. We've been talking about this accident all morning long. It looked like we had made some progress on it, but the delay still seems to be there. So uh, for the time being, expect delays inbound at Brookshire on I-10. Our camera shot here is from FM 1489. That is this intersection right here, just upstream from where the accident happened. The accident happened right here at FM 359. So we can't actually see the accident scene to see exactly what's happening, but we can keep track of the backup for you. It was clear for a while. It has resumed, so definitely plan for a little bit of a delay, at least for now, at this particular spot. Northwest Freeway, West 43rd, things looking pretty good here. Notice less fog on this particular shot than we had on the Katy Freeway shot in Waller County. So things are a little bit in and out as far as the fog goes. The fog is not widespread. It is patchy, but where we do have fog, it can be really, really thick, hence the dense fog advisory. Gulf Freeway at Howard looking pretty good on the southeast side of town. Traffic flowing nicely there and in fact our drive times are looking good we are in the green across the board this Katy number 22 minutes into downtown of course that doesn't factor in the accident just outside of Katy uh, that's to the west of the Katy area uh, Baytown into downtown 16 minutes Laporte into the 610 loop 12 minutes we're looking very good from that standpoint back to you guys okay Eric thanks so, so back to that breaking news the uh, accident between the 18 wheeler and a car at I-10 near FM 359 which is as Eric was showing us big backups now in the Brookshire area that's right. Channel 2's Taisha Walker is in that backup right now in that area. So, Taisha, what is the traffic looking like where you are? Naya, I'll show you in just a second, but traffic has been at a standstill for hours. It really just started to move here near the Brookshire exit about within the last 15 minutes or so. Take a look as I show you the traffic ahead of us. Uh, this is all of that backup from that three vehicle accident on I-10 eastbound near FM 359. We know that three vehicles were involved, including, excuse me, <laughs> Can you see? Okay, there we go. Uh, we know that three vehicles were involved, including an 18-wheeler. When we drove past the exit, initially we noticed that the truck appeared to be on its side in one of the right lanes. It's unclear what caused the accident, but it has been extremely foggy this morning. I don't know if it's translating for you guys on your camera, but the visibility has been lowering throughout the morning, uh, making it very hard for drivers to see. We're still waiting to hear if anyone was injured in this accident, but this is what the current state looks like. So if you have to be in this area, please plan a, a, accordingly or ahead or try to take 90 as an alternate route. Reporting live on the road, Taisha Walker, KPRC, Channel 2 News. All right, Taisha, thanks. We'll get you new batteries for that remote, too. 535 here, new this morning. There's anger over an argument and a night of drinking. That's what police said uh, led to a deadly crash in southwest Houston. A man crashed into a tree after going into a ditch on Mackinac near Post Oak Road, South Post Oak Road. Police say the man crashed after, again, getting into an argument with someone, and then he jumped into the truck, was driving up and down the street, they said. Uh, he died right in front of a neighbor's house. His identity has not been released. More than 300 Americans back in the U.S. now this morning. They've been evacuated from a Japanese cruise ship where hundreds tested positive for coronavirus. The passengers were finally allowed to leave the ship after the quarantine period, and they're being held now at military bases, including one in San Antonio. One couple recorded themselves boarding the plane. Well, we're exhausted, but we're on the plane, and uh, that's a good feeling. <laughs> Pretty miserable wearing these masks, though. Uh, the planes, they were on uh, the jumbo jets with no windows, usually uh, cargo. They're used for cargo aircraft. That's what they were flying in. The evacuees were told, hey, bring your own snacks and blankets because it's not like a normal passenger jet. Uh, now that they're back in America, the evacuees will have to spend another two weeks in quarantine at the military base just to make sure they don't have coronavirus. Time right now is 536 on this Monday morning. The reaction to the Astros' apology for the sign-stealing scandal, well, it's not been too good. Now the players from other teams are getting in on the criticism, like Dodgers outfielder Cody Bellinger. He just ripped Astros owner Jim this Crane guy. and even called out Jose Altuve, saying that he stole the 2017 MVP from Aaron Judge, while L.A. also had their title stolen from them. But now Astros shortstop Carlos Correa firing back, maintaining Altuve did not steal signs. Everybody in the league respects Jose Altuve, and this is why I'm talking about him, because he's too humble to talk about him not using the Trashian system. And he's such a great guy that he stood up there and he apologized, even though he didn't use that system. He 
Well, now MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred is addressing this back and forth. He says the players calling each other out is really not helping. And he says he met with the team managers to warn against players taking matters into their own hands and retaliating against the Astros when they're on the field. Last few days have been filled with so much controversy. And forget that the team's actually in spring training right now. Randy McAvoy is in West Palm Beach where the players are focusing their attention on the field, at least trying to, while they get ready for their first full team workout today. Hello once again from West Palm Beach, Florida and Astros spring training. First phase is now complete. That was pitchers and catchers for these first several days of workouts here in West Palm Beach. But all that will change. It's going to be all kinds of activity today because the position players will be here. The first official full squad workout. Pitchers will go about their business. We'll see a lot of hitting in the cages on the various practice fields as well. The Astros will hit the field uh, approximately 10 a.m., 10, 15 or so. And and as is usual during the course of spring training, a couple hours, two and a half hours of work, and they will call it a day and do it the next day and the next day. Hey, their first game, by the way, is coming up on Saturday. First exhibition game right here in West Palm Beach against the defending World Series champion, Washington Nationals. We'll hope to get some more interviews as well, hopefully speaking with Carlos Correa and Jose Altuve and maybe George Springer as well when the players report later this morning. That's the latest for now from West Palm Beach at Astros Spring training. Randy McAvoy, KPRC Channel 2 Sports. All right, thank you, Randy. <laughs> you ready? Play ball. You ready to help ready. them out. Time right now, 539. Let's go to Britta now with a check on our forecast. Britta, some uh, fog in a lot of areas now. Yes, it's an issue. So we do have a dense fog advisory that was just issued about 10 minutes ago from the National, uh, National Weather Service. Uh, that dense fog advisory is in effect through 10 o'clock in the morning. It does not include our north counties. That's where we aren't seeing very thick fog. With the exception of Brenham, you're down to about one and three quarters miles so some patchy fog for you but it's very thick in the metro area with your visibility dropping to about a quarter of a mile the one spot not looking bad southeast Harris County there we do not have any issues at this point uh, temperature wise we're in the 60s it's a really mild start it's looking like a very warm afternoon we'll talk about your afternoon temperatures and a few afternoon showers coming up next over to you all right, time to for traffic now. We've got our accident on the west side of town. This is in the Brookshire area. It continues to cause delays um, at FM 1489 here. We've got a three vehicle fire and crash uh, that has occurred. They're still cleaning it up. It's been ongoing for a couple of hours now. Elsewhere, we have fog, but we have much better driving conditions. ESEC Freeway at Rankin near Bush Airport. We've got a half mile of visibility, but it doesn't look all that bad right now on 59. Your current drive times inbound from all our major suburbs looking just fine delay free back to you all right thank you eric some somber moments at the nba all-star game kobe bryant was not far from those players minds i had the emotional tributes to the late basketball star it's 5 40. black history Good morning. Time right now is 542 on this Monday. NBA All-Star Weekend's now a wrap, but not before a really thrilling fourth quarter, which ended with Team LeBron 157-155 win. Yeah, close margin. The three uh, first three quarters served as mini games where each win would secure money for charity. And then the fourth quarter happened. And the first to 157 finish turned to a normal all-star format on its head. Uh, in the end, uh, Anthony Davis knocked down a uh, bucket to secure the victory. And there were a lot of moments during the All-Star Weekend featuring tributes to Kobe Bryant and his daughter Deanna. Now you remember they were killed in that helicopter crash along with seven others last month. In one of the weekend's most poignant moments, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver announced that the All-Star Games MVP award will permanently be named to honor the basketball great. Kawhi Leonard took home the first ever Kobe Bryant All-Star MVP award last night. There he is right there. Before the game, players held hands for an eight-second moment of silence. Some of them also wore Kobe's shoes in his memory. Now, ahead of that game, Grammy winner Jennifer Hudson performed a very emotional tribute. Kobe was the youngest player ever to compete in an All-Star game. He was named MVP four times. Houston's newest team continues to be a fan favorite in the XFL. Yeah, coming up, we'll get some highlights from the Roughnecks game over the weekend. 
Morning. If there is a ceiling fan spinning above your head, you need to check it. Tens of thousands of fans are under recall because faulty blades could fly off. I've got the details you need to know coming up. And I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez. If you feel that sweet cravings are really intense when you try to diet, there are some swaps to make it easier to get rid of all that sugar. Details are up next. Time now, 5:44. Google Services. Good morning, your time is 546. We are dealing with the dense fog advisory. It is in effect until 10 o'clock this morning. It does not include our north counties, uh, but we're seeing some pretty dramatically low uh, visibility. We're down to a half mile at Bush Airport, a quarter of a mile in Tomball, so please take that extra time this morning. We'll take a look at your afternoon forecast coming up next. Thanks, Britta. Houston Roughnecks back in action this weekend, trying to remain undefeated after a dazzling display in week one. They pulled off another win at TDECU Stadium in front of a larger crowd than the league's opener, so they're, you know, they're getting bigger. The audience said is a great game led by Roughnecks quarterback P.J. Walker. Just before the half, uh, gave, he took Houston uh, and gave him the lead, and they won the game 28-24. The Roughnecks are 2 0 on the season. Up next, they head to Florida to take on the Tampa Bay Vipers. Nice. All right. Dances come and go, you know. Uh, <laughs> and right now, the renegade is all over TikTok. I don't know about the rest of social media. Are people doing it everywhere? I mean, maybe I think it's a lot of TikTok. I've never even seen it, but I apparently I need to Google it. Well, this morning, we are learning the name of the teen who actually created this popular dance. The song Lottery by Atlanta rapper K Camp has been topping the charts, all thanks to the success of the Renegade Challenge. This is it here on TikTok. A lot of people taking the challenge have wondered where exactly this dance started. Well, we now know who created it. K Camp tweeted out a video of himself with 14 year old Jelia Harmon and her friend thanking the girls for sparking this dance craze. It's funny because an artist will, you know, when it goes viral on TikTok, the songs just get in your head mm -hmm. and then the downloads and the streams start and it's been really big for a lot of artists, believe it or not. TikTok of all places. <laughs> uh, many studies have shown sugar is one of the most palatable and addictive foods. And that's why food manufacturers use a lot of it and everything they make to keep you coming back for more. I know, it's so good and it is really addicting. Health reporter Haley Hernandez has some tips to help us reduce our sugar cravings. Help us. That's right. Good morning guys so it can be as simple as swapping flavored yogurt for plain yogurt and adding your own sweetener the trick is getting the most quality nutrients for the sugar that you do eat in a day but just because that's a simple concept doesn't mean it's easy to execute Hamburgers aren't even sweet, but did you know the average bun has five grams of sugar? Add condiments like ketchup or barbecue sauce, and this one sandwich might contain your whole day's worth of sugar. You're not eating a donut. You're eating a hamburger, but it may still have a lot of sugar. Dietitian Erin Gussler says you're probably conditioned to eating these foods. You might even be addicted. Mice prefer sugar over addictive drugs in some studies. But we're smarter than mice, and these are really easy ways to reduce the cravings. Start with some swaps. There are natural sugars, so things like our fruits and our vegetables, our starchy veggies like potatoes, sweet potatoes, our grains, and things like that, which I always encourage my patients, if you are going to eat sugar, try to choose a more natural version of it. But it's best to get it from whole foods. Turn to vanilla, peppermint, honey, and fruit to add to foods and be in control of the kind of sugar you eat. And as you do that and rid the processed foods from your diet, make sure to eat more fats. Nuts and seeds and avocados and things like that. That'll help you stay full. That'll help you stay satisfied. That'll keep those energy levels up. All right, so you want to hear the easiest, simplest thing that works, even though it sounds like it's not going to. Next time you're in the grocery store or at work and somebody brings treats in, you're inclined to eat that just because it's a habit. Say no. Psychologists say <laughs> reconditioning your mind to think no when you see these foods and then actually following through and not eating them will start to make them seem less appealing and taste less satisfying. J just say no. That sounds I know. like something I heard I, once. I, exactly. Right? I'm not trying to go all like Nancy Reagan on you, but <laughs> psychologists but you say that this works. <laughs> hey, you gotta find your discipline wherever yeah, it is. I know. You know. It kept me off drugs growing up, so. You know, my, my, dad, <laughs> my dad used to quote Nike all the time. He said, what did Nike say? Just do it, you know? Yeah. Get out there and just say no. Just uh, say no to all the sugar. The million it's slogans, not but as hard you as gotta you just, it is. yeah, you simplify, right? Oh. Britta? I just think I need to say it at least 30 times because I did not say no to my cheeseburger and onion rings this weekend, and I really don't feel bad about it. Just putting <laughs> it out there. 
Uh, so let's take a live look at the Southwest Freeway. I know it's kind of hard to tell it's the Southwest Freeway. We have very thick fog outside. Uh, your visibility is down to about a half mile at Bush Airport, a quarter of a mile in Katy. So just make sure that you're taking slow, using your low beams. We'll see some improvements between 10 and 11 o'clock in the morning. We have a dense fog advisory in effect until 10 o'clock in the morning, but it does not include our north counties. That's where we're faring pretty nicely this morning, uh, but otherwise, most areas you are dealing with the fog. This afternoon, 78 degrees. It's going to be warm, muggy, breezy. A few isolated showers are possible, but your rain chance is limited at 20%. If you get caught this afternoon, it's just going to be a light, annoying rain shower. It's not going to slow you down too much. We're looking at heavier rain chances towards the middle part of the work week. Look at the snow in the Colorado Rockies. That's a weather system that's going to jump over the Rockies, head in our direction, and then drag a cold front through. The timing for that cold front, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, but the wettest days look to be Wednesday and Thursday on our future cast model. Behind that system, we are right back to winter temperatures. So we're going from the upper 70s right back to the 50s, a big swing towards the end of the work week. Rainfall totals, and again, most of this is going to be on Wednesday and Thursday. About an inch to an inch and a half of rain for us here in Houston. Our north counties could see about two to three inches of rain, so we can manage that. It would be beneficial as, believe it or not, we are still abnormally dry for this time of year. We're below. Uh, there's a full look at that 10-day forecast, warm and spring-like for the first half of the work week. And then, Eric, we are right back down to the 50s for Thursday. All right. Sounds like a typical winter forecast, Britta. This morning, fog is the big issue. Where you see the yellow on this map right here, that's where the fog is thickest. So northwest and to the southwest of town. Uh, although, even on the east side, southeast side, you may run into some patchy fog. So just be aware of it. Check it out here. Katie for you at, at FM 1489. Very socked in with fog in the Berkshire area. We had an accident. Good news here. It's been working for hours. It has now cleared. So the eastbound traffic looking good coming in. We should see no issues through the Berkshire area eastbound on I-10 from here on out this morning, assuming we don't have any continued accidents. Southwest Freeway at uh, Sweetwater Boulevard. This is in the Sugarland area. Kind of hazy out there. So give it a little extra time coming in from the southwest side of town. 288 here too. A little on the hazy side, but traffic is flowing pretty nicely right now at this hour. Your current drive time is only 11 minutes. Not too surprising. Today, of course, is President's Day. Probably a lot of people have the day off. If you do have to go to work with the fog, keep your low beams on, uh, your fog lights on, keep the speed slow, increase your following distance, and keep the cell phones down. Pretty much common sense stuff to get from point A to point B safely. This morning, here are your current drive times. We are still looking good in the green across the board. Drive safely. Back to you. Okay, Eric, thanks. Uh, things are getting pretty fishy between two fast food giants, and now coronavirus is complicating matters for businesses and consumers. Plus, a ceiling fan recall that you really need to know about this morning. Consumer expert Amy Davis is here with all of the details. Good morning. Yeah, the ceiling fan thing is actually kind of scary oh, yeah. because thousands of ceiling fans at homes across the country are now under recall because the blades can fly off and obviously hurt somebody. Lowe sold the Harbor Breeze 48-inch Santa Ana ceiling fans between May 2014 and January 2016. The manufacturer has received 210 complaints about the blades flying off. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says in 10 cases those blades did cause injuries. People who have these fans are urged to stop using them and contact the company Phantom Industries. Well, prom season is still a few months away, but this year you need to get your dress as early as possible. The reason? The coronavirus. Some wedding and prom dress wholesalers get a majority of their inventory from China and right now factories there are shut down or struggling to get back up and running because of the virus. So in fact the entire supply chain is facing problems including fabric mills, trucking and even air freight. My goodness. Yeah. You think about all the stuff yeah. that comes out of China these days it makes sense. I know. Crazy. Thanks. All right. Thank you Amy. What's the video that is reigniting the debate over airline etiquette? You've probably seen this all over social media lately. To recline or not to recline. <laughs> the CEO of Delta is now weighing in his advice straight ahead. Now here's Robert Arnold with a story he's working on for tonight at 10. It changes the way you look at everything. The consequences are permanent. That thing that you can't, you can't comprehend happening it can't happen. Channel 2 Investigates looks at 50 years of fatal school shootings. Gun violence doesn't discriminate. It doesn't know zip codes. Monday at 6 on KPRC Channel 2 News, hear why police, parents, and survivors I would absolutely be a game changer. Say curbing gun violence at school starts in the home. 
Good morning. Trending just before six, Sonic the Hedgehog speeds to the number one spot in the weekend box office. Now, this uh, movie from the Sega video game Sonic opened with $57 million. The film was postponed three months to give them uh, the extraterrestrial blue hedgehog a makeover after the initial trailer was ridiculed on social media. Birds of Prey slid into second place, earning $17.1 million. Well, when you think about an eight-year-old girl's birthday party, the first thing that comes to your mind probably is not Target. But for one girl in Atlanta, that is exactly how she wanted to spend her special day. Brayden Lawrence got a group of friends together dressed in red shirts and khakis to go to that store. Brayden says uh, Target is her favorite place on earth, so choosing to hold her birthday party in the store was actually a no-brainer. They had to get special permission from the store manager to hold a party there, but he seemed to love that idea. He even had the girls, they got their own Target name tags. Look at that. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. All right, getting into town from the west side, a bit of a mess this morning. Heavy fog plus a wreck out on I-10 in the Brookshire area is backing up traffic. We'll talk with Eric and Britta in just a moment. And the back and forth's not seeming to stop. The Astros ready to move on with spring training, but some players on other teams are demanding more action from the league. I thought Manfred's punishment was weak, giving him immunity. How the commissioner is addressing those kinds of comments. And what Carlos Correa had to say about it. And to recline or not to recline up in the skies. That's the question that uh, we've been dealing with behind the scenes. It's gone Very far true. Along. We want to know what, what you think about it. We'll tell you how uh, the head of a major U.S. airline uh, or what, what that person is saying about it. So good morning. We're now at Monday, the 17th of February. I'm Owen Conflenti. Good morning. I'm Tania Wright. Eric is in tracking the traffic. Few yes. problems out there. We have uh, one major one. This was on the Katy Freeway. It looks like things have lined out. Uh, we've got traffic flowing again out in the Brookshire area eastbound on I-10, which is always uh, good news. The big issue we've got to deal with this morning morning is quite honestly the fog and in that particular area Waller County we've got really thick fog so definitely give yourselves extra time I know traffic is pretty light this morning because we've got the President's Day holiday so I'm sure a lot of people have the day off but if you have to get on the roadways we've got a dense fog advisory yeah and it, it, we're not really gonna see large improvements until about 10 11 o'clock in the morning so make sure that you keep that in mind for the next several hours let's take you outside uh, this is a live look at one of our cameras that's up in the cloud deck but that fog does extend all the way down to the roads. Uh, dense fog advisory is in effect through 10 o'clock this morning. It does not include our north counties. You're faring pretty well there. Uh, one exception, Brenham in Washington County. You have some light patchy dense fog, but you'll see on the visibility map it is very thick once you work into the metro area. We're down to a half mile at Bush Airport. Similar conditions in Sugarland, Tomball, you're down to a quarter of a mile. And then the sea fog moving in right up the Gulf Freeway has you dropping your visibility down to about a quarter of a mile. On our fog future cast model, you can see between 10 11 o'clock in the morning, that's when we see the improvements this afternoon. Eric, it's going to be a warm one. 78 degrees, breezy out there, and a few spotty showers. I'll take a look at those afternoon shower chances coming up. All right, thank you very much, Britta. Time saver traffic now. As I mentioned, west of town, that's where the fog seems to be the thickest. This is where we had the accident on I-10 eastbound at Brookshire. Fortunately, as we take a look at this traffic camera, traffic flowing in both directions. So the accident is taken care of. But look at the fog out there. It is thick, definitely. Highway 225 on the other side of town, we're not seeing as much fog by any means. Traffic flowing nicely on 225 at Preston. Same thing on I-10. A little slow getting toward the San Jacinto River on the out outbound side of things, but the overall outbound drive time, not all that bad. We're still only looking at about 16 minutes here. Inbound drive times continue to be delay free in the green across the board, with the exception of Pearland, a slight two minute delay for you folks coming in from the south side. Back to you. All right, Eric, thanks. 6.02 now. Astros manager Dusty Baker says uh, he accepts that no one is moving on from the team sign stealing scandal, but he's defending his players when it comes to them speaking their minds. That's right. Everyone's still talking about the back and forth between Carlos Correa and Dodgers outfielder Cody Bellinger. That happened over the weekend. Channel 2's Vincent Crivelli joins us now live in our studio. So, Vincent, the league commissioner finally broke his silence when it comes to any possible retaliation. Tanaya Owen, good morning. The commissioner made it clear. He says the trash talk is hurting the game and trying to throw a pitch at an Astros player will not be tolerated. 
After investigating the sign-stealing scandal, Major League Baseball suspended four current or former Astros, Jeff Luno, Alex Cora, Carlos Beltran, and A.J. Hinch. I think losing your job in a sport like baseball where there's really no substitute um, is a pretty serious deterrent. However, the bickering is far from over and is causing drama around the league. Thinly veiled threats have been made about players aiming pitches at Astros batters, but Commissioner Robert Manfred shut that down. I hope that I made it extremely clear to them that retaliation in game by throwing at a batter intentionally will not be tolerated, whether it's Houston or anybody else. Many around the league not happy with the Astros' punishment. Manford said stripping the Astros of the 2017 title was discussed, but he concluded would be a futile act. League policy was revised because of the scandal. I do expect that we will for 2020 have really serious restrictions on player and playing personnel access to um, video in game. Um, I, I think it's really important for us to send a message to our fans that not only did we investigate and punish, but we altered our policies in a way that will help make sure it doesn't happen again. And during the same press conference, Manfred said he expects to complete the Red Sox sign stealing investigation by the end of next week. Owen Tanaya, back to you. Thank you, Vincent. Sports Director Randy McAvoy has been in West Palm Beach, Florida, covering all of this as well. He spoke to Astros manager Dusty Baker about Correa's comments over the weekend. We're going to hear from him coming up at 6.30. 6.05 now. New this morning, a house consumed by smoke when a fire broke out in southwest Houston overnight. It happened at a home on Mackinac Street near South Post Oak Road. Uh, one resident and one firefighter were rushed to the hospital. Crews say they were able to put the fire out quickly despite the amount of smoke. And the resident and the firefighter suffered minor injuries, but authorities say the firefighter's injuries were uh, actually unrelated to that fire. Time right now is 6.05 this morning. A memorial service is set this afternoon to honor the lives of Sugarland mother and her son who were killed inside of their home. Police say Richard Logan shot and killed his wife Diana as well as their son Aaron before driving to San Marcos where he physically assaulted his daughter and then committed suicide. The service for the Logan family is going to be held at 2 o'clock at the River Point Church. The parents of a woman uh, who was shot during what seems to be a road rage incident uh, is speaking only to Channel 2. Yesterday morning, their 24-year-old daughter, Jaleesa Fisher, was shot trying to exit Highway 59, the Southwest Freeway at Chimney Rock. Police say she cut off another vehicle, believed to have been a BMW. Next thing she know, the car got on the side of her, and she really wasn't paying the car any attention. And then it's like she just thought something was thrown at her car, and her leg was burning. The bullet went through the car door and into Jaleesa's left leg, splitting the bone, breaking it. Anyone with information on that shooting, again, 59 at Chimney Rock yesterday morning, is asked to call police. This morning, a Houston family is breathing a sigh of relief after their son, who you see right here, who was taken when the car he was sleeping in was stolen from a parking lot. Well, he is now back safe with his family. Investigators say that five-year-old stayed inside of his, mother, his mother's car when she ran into a business in southwest Houston to cash a check. In the short time she was inside of that store, the car was stolen with that little boy inside. Luckily, he was found about five hours later when a passerby spotted that car a mile from where it was taken. Now the family says they are truly thankful for the man who helped them to find their son. He was sleeping. He didn't go to sleep on time, so he was tired. And I stopped in for less than four minutes. And as soon as I walked back out, I went in and out. And as soon as I walked back out, the car is gone. So I just thank God and thank this man. Investigators are now searching for the man in this surveillance footage you can see right here. They say they believe he may have stolen the car. Now, if you have any information on him or the GMC Yukon that he was originally in, you're asked to give Houston police a call. So today's President's Day, and while you might find some good sales out there, you might find some things closed as well, like the U.S. Post Office will not be delivering mail today. Most banks are closed, stock markets closed, courts are closed, the DMV is closed. But today, the National Museum of Funeral History in Houston will be open with a new exhibit honoring President George H.W. Bush. It focuses on his life and that of First Lady Barbara Bush, along with their funeral services. 
Well, fasten your seatbelts. You are about to travel thousands of feet in the air in a crowded small space with some people you probably hope to never see again. <laughs> Coming up, viral videos sparking the debate. Is it okay to recline your seat on a plane or not? Uh, we'll get some advice from the Delta CEO as well, Britta, some professional expert advice here. Mm, well, this morning, you need to give yourself some extra time out the door. We are waking up to thick fog temperatures in the 60s, and we're in for a really warm afternoon. Shower chances, they're back in the forecast. I'll let you know when you'll be grabbing your umbrella coming up. As far as traffic goes, the fog seems to be the biggest issue we're dealing with right now, but people dealing with it well because we are accident-free right now. Katy Freeway at 610, the West Loop, looking just fine at this hour. This bill be a little off, maybe. We'll take a look at your current drive times from across the area. That's coming up in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. Taking opportunities. Good morning. Your time is 610. We are waking up to very soupy conditions. You're visibly down to a quarter of a mile in Tomball. It's very thick in the metro area. Give yourself that extra time. We have a dense fog advisory in effect through 10 a.m. On our fog future cast, you can see between 10 and 11 o'clock in the morning, we start to see some improvements, but a few spots won't clear out until about lunchtime. Amy, over to you. Hey, Britta, congratulations to J.J. Watt, did you hear, and his new wife, Kaylee O'Hai. The Texans defensive back and former Houston Dash player tied the knot over the weekend in the Bahamas. The Texans tweeted out their well wishes after they learned of the nuptials. And from what we've seen on social media, we're showing you these pictures. It looked like a blast. <laughs> totally. We've got a video of J.J. getting down with his grandma oh, at the reception. Awesome. Bring on that video. One thing a lot of fans noticed was the casual wear at the wedding reception. We'll show you in just a moment. One person tweeted out their support saying Kaylee O'Hai and JJ Watt chaining into, changing into athleisure for their wedding reception is a powerful move. All right. And I respect it. I agree. <laughs> Yeah, a few other fans had to say, um, one person said, as if Valentine's Day wasn't hard enough, J.J. Watt just got married, apparently. I've had enough. Uh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Another guy seemed to predict news of the wedding would get that reaction. He tweeted in part, that horrible wailing sound you hear, it's hundreds of women waking up to the news <laughs> J.J. Watt is married. Yep. There's his grandma. Did grandma that when the video. engagement announcement came out there. Yeah. That, so you knew it was coming, ladies. Yeah. Come on. It's like, let's see more of that reception. Hey, but we got to talk about this. To recline or not to recline? Apparently, that's the question everyone is asking after a video went viral showing a man punching a woman's chair. There's been a lot of debate about this for days. But now another question has emerged. Should you ask if you can recline? Delta CEO thinks so. He says, I think that the proper thing to do is that if you're going to recline into somebody, you ask if it's okay first, and then you do it. Well, this is the video that sparked the debate. It shows a man repeatedly punching a woman named Wendy Williams' chair after she had reclined on an American Airlines flight. So it kind of looks more like he's pushing it. Williams said a flight attendant reprimanded her and offered him rum. Mm. I think it should be the other way around. Yeah, she claims she had lost time at work, had to visit a doctor and get x-rays because of the horrible headache she's been experiencing after this. And I got to tell you, after seeing that video, that is nothing compared to, it's been a long time ago, but there was a guy in front of me reclined a seat and I could have massaged his temples really? on his forehead. I was like, hello. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to try not to breathe on you. I don't know if I'm being rude or you're being rude. Like, what is going on here? Jeez. So, I mean, if it's that far back, but. Yeah. Well, then, then, then we've been all talking about this in the <laughs> studio so well then you fly a lot I fly right? a lot I recline but on the flights I go on it reclines like two inches so it doesn't yeah. really do too much but from that angle you couldn't really tell how far back that woman was into the man's seat yeah. but yeah. it's like Delta maybe you should just give us a little exactly more yeah. these aren't luxury yeah. we're not in the front of the plane we're right exactly. all the way back down we're yeah. getting like a two inch recline so I can put my yeah. shoulders back but it's a great right. debate and it continues on Facebook too we'll talk it about right. it a little bit later all right coming up the top five Democrats trying to get to the White House are in Nevada this week Getting ready for another debate. Uh, also, we're talking about early voting here in Texas at 614 now on Channel 2. Yes. Here we are back at 616. In Mississippi, there's a state of emergency this morning as a rain-swollen river is expected to crest at record levels today. Uh, forecasters are expecting the Pearl River to crest at 38 feet. That'll be the highest level since the 1980s. Some roads and homes near the river are underwater already. First responders have been working to get folks out after a mandatory evacuation order was put in place. Forecasters believe it could be days before the flood waters recede. 
Time right now is 6.16 on this Monday morning. Superstar Elton John is trying to get better right now after he announced that he has been struggling with walking pneumonia. He actually had to cut his performance short in New Zealand last night because of it. The 72-year-old was on stage for about two hours. He later wrote to his fans on Instagram saying, I played and sang my heart out until my voice could not sing no more. I'm disappointed, deeply upset, and sorry. President Trump, meantime, made a pit stop at the Daytona 500. Started with a flyover from Air Force One. After he landed, the president gave those most famous words of motorsports, gentlemen, start your engines. The president and first lady then led the field of 40 cars for a pace lap. The race continues today because it was rained out just 20 laps in. Over now to Decision 2020 this morning. Early voting in Texas starts tomorrow for several statewide races and legislative seats. Voters can cast ballots at any polling locations in the county. You can find these locations on the Texas Secretary of State's website ahead of early voting. Early voting ends on February 28th. Election Day is March 3rd. Now to the race for the White House. The five leading Democratic candidates are getting ready for their next big debate this week in Nevada. NBC's Tracy Ponce is live this morning in Washington following their campaigns. And Tracy, at least two more candidates could qualify for Wednesday's debate. Right. We're looking at Michael Bloomberg, possibly Tom Steyer. Big question, though, about Bloomberg. He seems to be the, the wild card here. He has outspent every other candidate combined already in advertising, yet not uh, yet on the ballot, not yet in a debate. Super Tuesday is sort of his, his firewall, or really when, when he hopes to start. But it's possible we could see him in Nevada. Five candidates have qualified for the Wednesday debate there. Uh, they are Bernie Sanders, who is leading in the polls, and then Pete Buttigieg, who's leading with the delegate count. Also, Senator Amy Klobuchar, who overperformed in New Hampshire, also hoping to make a strong showing in Nevada. And then former Vice President Joe Biden and Senator Elizabeth Warren, both of them have some catching up to do. Biden has said um, that he's not worried, that it's not unusual, uh, so he's hoping to catch up, if not in Nevada, in South Carolina. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Tracy, for that live update now from our nation's capital. 619, now we've been following a breaking news this morning out on I-10. How's that situation going? Uh, there's still a bit of a backup, but traffic is getting through. So with the volume of traffic being pretty low this morning, it's not causing huge issues. So uh, the fog is pro probably the biggest issue that we're dealing with, and that may have caused the accident out there on the west side of town. But overall, traffic is moving along pretty nicely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and with it being a holiday, a lot of kids and parents are home today. Uh, we are dealing with fog, though. So if you do have little ones that have to get out to daycare today, getting yourself to work, you give yourself that extra time. This is a live look outside. Uh, it's pretty soupy out there. This is the Southwest Freeway from our tower camera. Temperatures on the Southwest side in the low 60s. So it's super mild out there. It's going to be a really warm, muggy and breezy day. So don't worry about grabbing the jackets this morning. Uh, we're down to a half mile visibility in Sugarland, a quarter of a mile in Katy, half mile at Bush Airport. So far, the southeast side of Harris County has been doing really well, but I'm starting to see it drop. We're down to a quarter of a mile now at Hobby Airport. So it looks like that's really moving in. So Pasadena, moving closer to the bay. You haven't had much of an issue, but be prepared. You're still under that dense fog advisory. That's up until 10 o'clock this morning. It does not include our north counties, where we have been faring pretty nicely. And we'll see some improvements between 10 and 11 o'clock in the morning with fog. This afternoon, don't expect a lot of sunshine. We'll keep it mostly cloudy. 78 degrees. It's going to be a really warm day. Stray showers are possible. But if you get caught, it's going to be a light, annoying shower. We're looking at higher rain chances as we get towards the middle part of the world. Week. We're watching this snow in the Colorado Rockies. That's a weather system that's going to hop over the Rockies, move in our direction. It's going to drag a cold front through southeast Texas Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Although the cold front rolls through Wednesday morning, we stay pretty unsettled with a good chance of rain through Thursday. Behind that weather system, a big drop in temperatures. So half the work week is featuring our spring like temperatures, and then we're right back down to winter temperatures for the end of the work week. In terms of rainfall totals, and again, most of this is going to be on Wednesday and Thursday. About an inch to an inch and a half of rainfall for us here in Houston. Our North County is about two to three, so we can easily manage that rainfall. And in fact, it will be beneficial. Believe it or not, I know it feels like it's been raining a lot. We're still actually below for this year for rainfall. There's a full look at that 10 day forecast. Temperatures in the 70s for the first half. Then that cold front rolls through and we're right back down to the 50s for our afternoon highs. Eric, over to you.
All right, Britta, thank you very much. Time saver traffic now. Let's check things out. On the west side of town, we've been talking about this accident uh, near the Brookshire area. It looks like we may have another little hiccup going on, possibly fog related, just to the east of FM 359. A little bit of a backup here, and we'll keep an eye on this for you. No camera trained on this particular spot, but it could delay you just a couple of minutes. Overall, though, things fairly quiet on the roadways. Volumes are low, so any traffic incidents are causing huge problems. Eastbound on the North Beltway, we do have a little bit of an issue right around the Hardy Toll Road. You can see at Green's Crossing here, got a right lane kind of sort of blocked, half blocked, sort of on the shoulder, sort of in the right lane. But traffic is going a little bit on the slow side. North Beltway, again, eastbound. Here it is at Imperial Valley. Kind of a slow go, so probably an extra five minutes along this stretch of road. Inbound drive times, though, continue to be pretty good. Five minute delay out of Pearland. Everywhere else, we are looking delay free. Back to you guys. Thank you, Eric. SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket will lift off back into space this morning. Now, the launch coming after a 24-hour delay ahead. What that rocket will be carrying, it's 622 now. We're back now at 625, two weeks away, a little more than two weeks, I should say, from the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. Today we're talking about the art you'll see there. 20,000 Texas students submitted their work for the Rodeo's school art program. And these are some of this year's winners. So, the, or this is, uh, this is uh, the winner here. On the left uh, is the grand champion, Pasadena ISD student Anthony Vega created the piece called Morning Pep Talk. The reserve grand champion is on the right. Fort Bend ISD student Amaris She created the piece called Roped In. Time right now, coming up on 626, in the future of space, SpaceX will launch another batch of Starlink satellites into orbit today. The Falcon 9 rocket will blast off into space just after 9 o'clock this morning from Cape Canaveral, Florida. More than 60 satellites will go up as well. They're designed to beam internet across the planet. Well, many players in major leagues are uh, not really happy with the Astros following the investigation into sign stealing. And now there are some rumors of retaliation on the field. So coming up, sports director Randy McElvoy with manager Dusty Baker's thoughts on players from other teams who may want to deal with punishing the Astros themselves. And I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez. You probably won't be surprised to hear that election 2020 is causing mental distress. Why it may seem like it didn't used to be this way and how to shut it off coming up. And time saver traffic. We are dealing with a lot of dense fog out there, especially on the west side of town. Katy Freeway at Igloo socked in with a lot of it. Plan for a little extra time on your drive to work or school this morning. So we'll take you through that dense fog advisory. Right now, you're visibly down to a quarter of a mile in many locations across the metro area. We also have rain in the forecast. I'll let you know when you will be needing your umbrella and what we're expecting throughout your work week. This is home. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. Uh, 6.30 now. Get more. Uh, get ready, that is, to drive through some dense fog in some spots. We've got a huge accident to tell you about, too, involving a semi-truck that shut down several lanes out in the Brookshire Sealy area. We'll check in with Eric Bright on that. Breaking overnight, two planes carrying American cruise ship passengers are now in the United States. The first in California, the second is now in San Antonio. We're going to tell you what's next for the passengers and the number of cases in Japan. That continues to climb. Hey, all this week, we are asking, am I doing this right? Let me tell you early, you're not. <laughs> this morning, we're talking about what you do behind the wheel, things you didn't know could damage your car, running on empty, topping off your tank. We're going to explain what you should do and why. Don't worry. <laughs> Heads up, you're wrong. <laughs> good, good morning, everyone. Thanks for waking up with us. 6.30 now. I'm Tanaya Ray. I'm Owen Plenty. Good morning. Eric Braid, how's that accident doing out there? Well, we're still seeing a backup out there, but people are getting by, so I think it's it's fairly minimal in terms of the delay associated with it, but it is still there. We've also got a little bit of a hiccup going on on the Beltway on the north side of town. We'll talk about that, too. Okay. Yeah, fog's not helping. Uh, unfortunately, it's not really going anywhere over the next several hours. We will not see complete clearing of the fog until we get closer to lunchtime. So here's a live look at one of our cameras. This is an elevated camera. You're on top of a building, so you're well into the cloud deck, but we are dealing with fog that extends all the way down to the roadways, and a lot of the metro area is having to deal with it. The one spot where we're seeing at least an easier time uh, is in the southeast side of Harris.
Pierce County. Hobby Airport, though, you're dropping down a quarter of a mile, so it's starting to even creep closer and closer to the bay. Uh, right now, Galveston, you're at a half mile or a quarter mile, pardon me, in similar conditions on the northwest side in Tomball. Our fog futurecast model showing that we have some clearing between 10 and 11 o'clock in the morning, but a few spots, especially closer to the water, they will not clear out completely until after lunchtime. This afternoon, we'll be topping off at 78 degrees. Eric, right now we're in the 60s. These temperatures well above average for this time of year. A few spotty showers are possible, but the rain chances are only going up. We'll time out a cold front coming up. Over to you. All right, Britta, thank you very much for that. Time taper traffic. Now, traffic overall pretty light. We're starting to see some volume delays on area roadways, but we are continuing to watch this delay through the Berkshire area eastbound on I-10. A bit of a slow go around FM 359 on the eastbound side of things. Take a look at what's going on. We don't have a camera train on this particular spot. Uh, the closest one we've got is a little bit downstream. Katy Freeway at Igloo. The one thing you will notice, a lot of dense fog in this area. So the delay may be a few minutes, but overall the fog is the big issue area-wide. North Belt has been a little bit sluggish. We had an accident here just a bit ago, but it looks like things are lining out. And your inbound drive times are still looking pretty good. A short delay in from Pearland, about seven minutes elsewhere. We're looking at just minor, minor delays due to the heavier volume. No other crashes to speak of across the area. Back to you guys. Okay, Eric, thanks so much. Uh, it bears repeating, though, we got the dense fog advisory in place till 10 this morning, so be careful out there. That's right. Eric has also been talking about an accident involving a semi that has been causing some uh, pretty big backups on the west side. Channel 2's Taisha Walker is at the scene now. So, Taisha, tell us what you're seeing. Well, tonight, if you take a look over to the left lane, you can see traffic is moving now, at least in one of those left lanes. We know that traffic has been opened up in that lane for about an hour now. Take a look over to the right. You can see crews are cleaning up some of the debris from the aftermath of that accident. We don't have a whole lot of information about the accident right now. We did try reaching out to police and TxDOT. What we do know is that three vehicles were involved in a crash this morning. A tow truck driver just telling me that it it involved two 18 wheelers and a car. He also tells me that the right lane was heavily damaged by that wreck. We know that the accident caused quite a traffic backup on the interstate and on the feeder road for at least two hours. It's unclear what actually led up to the accident, but it has been extremely foggy all morning. In fact, it looks as though the fog has gotten a little bit thicker within the last hour. We're still waiting to hear if anyone was involved uh, in this accident, has been transported to the hospital, or was injured in any way. Uh, we'll continue to gather those details and bring it to you as soon as we can. Reporting live in Waller County, Taisha Walker, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Taisha. Time right now is 6.34 on this Monday morning. In the coronavirus crisis, two planes carrying American passengers from a quarantine cruise ship in Japan, well, they are now back in the U.S. One of those planes is in San Antonio. The first one, though, landed overnight in California with 14 passengers on board. Now, the U.S. health officials are saying those people have tested positive. They are among more than 300 Americans who were taken off that cruise ship yesterday. The other plane, again, on the ground in San Antonio. That one landed just before 4 o'clock this morning. The passengers will now be in isolation for two weeks. Japan, though, now confirming 99 more cases of people infected with the coronavirus on that quarantine ship, which we know is the Diamond Princess. The total now is 454. The man is dead after crashing his truck after a night of drinking. It's according to Houston police. It happened at Mackinac and Maiden Lane in southwest Houston around 1130 last night. Police say the man crashed into a ditch after getting into an argument with someone. And he jumped into his, into his truck and drove up and down the street. Uh, his identity has not been released at this point. No word yet if any adults will be charged after police say two children got a hold of a gun and one of them got shot. It happened at uh, Carmen and Coffee Streets on the southeast side of Houston yesterday. According to police, a four and a five year old were left alone. One of them shot the other at some point. The child was grazed in the head. Both were taken to the hospital and are expected to be okay. Astros manager Dusty Baker is calling on Major League Baseball to really pay attention to any potential retaliation from pitchers in the Astros sign-stealing fallout. The first spring training game against the Nationals is scheduled for Saturday. Everyone will be watching that. Several players in the league upset after the Astros apologized last week. One of the most vocal, Dodgers outfielder Cody Bellinger. And his claims did not sit well with Carlos Correa. You know, I think what people don't realize is Altuve stole an MVP from Judge in 17. 
Um, everyone knows they stole the ring from us. Cody, like you don't know the facts, we're all in there, and nobody wants to talk about this, but I'm gonna talk about this. I'll say that to it was the one guy that didn't use the trash can. A few times that the trash can was banged was without his concern, consent, and he would go inside the clubhouse, inside the dugout to whoever was banging the trash can, and he would get pissed. Uh, a lot of people on Twitter reminding the world that Cody Bellinger hit 143 in that World Series. Sports director Randy McAvoy is in West Palm Beach with what Dusty Baker is saying after Carlos Correa's interview. Good morning from West Palm Beach, Florida. These first few days of Astros spring training have been quite the mix. A media circus, of course, on Thursday when the Astros uh, offered apologies uh, for the first time. But then it's been kind of quiet. Pitchers and catchers going about their business for these first several days. But that will change. A video yesterday, weather cleared for a good morning workout as pitchers and catchers worked out uh, solo for the final time because today it all changes with the full squad workout. All the position players will be here. A lot of activity throughout the complex. Now, yesterday, Dusty Baker met with the media, uh, was asked about Carlos Correa's MLB Network interview on Saturday where he protected Jose Altuve and fired shots back at Dodgers star Cody Bellinger. You know, when guys defend their teammates, uh, uh, you know, on one hand it's good, on the other hand, you know, you wish it hadn't happened sometimes. And, and you hope that this is the end. You know, this is what you hope. And, uh, but, you know, I've never tried to control, uh, you know, my players' mouths because they're grown men. So Dusty Baker, of course, standing up for his guy, says, hey, they're grown men. They can speak. And now we hope today to hear from Carlos Correa and perhaps Jose Altuve as well. That's it for now. From West Palm Beach at Astro Spring Training, Randy McAvoy, KPRC Channel 2 Sports. Thank you, Randy. Happening today, the man at the center of this violent arrest caught on camera will be in court. Surveillance video caught 59-year-old James Liberto struggling with an officer at a Baytown convenience store last week. The clerk says Liberto refused to pay and was being verbally abusive to customers who were inside of that store. Police say he'd been arrested twice before this incident for public intoxication. The criminal trial against chemical plant Arkema and three of its employees over fires at the company's Crosby plant is set to begin today. The company is accused of causing a release of air pollution uh, during Hurricane Harvey. The firm could also face a million dollar fine. Uh, there's another town hall meeting happening today for folks still recovering from the Watson explosion. Residents are invited to attend the meeting. It'll be at the Chavez Mexican Cafe at, along Gessner in Northwest Houston from five until eight o'clock this evening. Time right now is 639. Let's go to Britta now with a check on the forecast. People can expect to see some fog. Yeah, I mean the majority of folks that have to get to work this morning will have to battle fog. So this is a live look from our tower camera. This is actually the Southwest Freeway. Hard to see much of anything as the conditions are pretty soupy. Meanwhile, this is a live look into Galveston. Very similar. The sea fog very thick and are visibly down along seawall. It's down to about a quarter of a mile. So use your low beams. Take it slow. Give yourself that extra time. Right now we're also tracking fog on on the northwest side and Tomball and we're even seeing a drop in Conroe where you're not under the dense fog advisory but you're visibly down to about a quarter of a mile. Dense fog advisory is in effect through 10 a.m. Eric we'll talk about the afternoon coming up over to you. All right very good time save for traffic now this is the Katy Freeway uh, in Waller County. We do have an accident that's been in the works. Uh, the cleanup anyway has been in the works for probably the past three and a half to four hours now. Uh, so there are some delays. Uh, there have been some issues with the fog this morning. Definitely give yourself some extra time. The good news in all this is the fact that we've got fairly light traffic on this President's Day, so overall delays are at a minimum around the Houston area. Back to you. Thank you, Eric. A basketball game with no real losers. The NBA All-Star Game raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for charities. Coming up, how James Harden and Russell Westbrook did on Team LeBron and how they celebrated after the game. Hey, question, how often do you top off the tank and just force the pump to add a little more gas when you fill up your car? Did you know that could damage your vehicle? Yeah, I'm consumer expert Amy Davis. I'm going to explain why and four other ways you could be setting yourself up for costly repairs. And next, the benefits of hot chocolate. Why some say it's good for you. We need to... Good morning, everyone. I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez with your health headlines. The 2020 political season is well underway, but according to a recent study, too much politics can actually interfere with everything from emotional stability to physical well-being. Doctors say the results have been surprising.
It puts a strain on relationships and it puts a strain on the individuals, right? I mean, a lot of people are saying that the over 50% said that they find politics to be a significant source of stress. A lot of them are saying it's affecting their sleep, it's affecting their relationships, it's affecting their family life. Doctors say part of the problem, we can't get away from political news anymore. And when we focus on things that we can't control, they say it can bring us mental distress. So experts recommend taking a break from politics and instead focus on the things that you can control, our thoughts, decisions, and actions. They say the key is to give yourself permission, permission to occasionally check out. All right, chocolate fans, you're going to like this one. Turns out hot chocolate might be good for you. Yeah, you heard me right. According to a new study, hot cocoa boosts blood circulation in legs and helps keep people over the age of 60 stay on their feet. But you might have to drink a lot more than you think to get the benefit. Those who drank a mug three times a day for six months, that's a lot, were oh. able to walk significantly further in a walking test. Researchers, researchers say they believe it has to do with the fact that hot cocoa ha has epicatechin in it, which they say may improve blood flow to the participants' calves. All right. Wow. So we just find out where that, which part of the chocolate's got that. That's what I was thinking. Because yeah. then you got to think the sugar, and we just said sugar right. bad for us. Not drink all that hot but cocoa. And they're out but... walking, so exactly. All right, Maybe it's the sugar boost. Thank you, Haley. Uh, NBA All Star <laughs> Weekend wrapped up last night with Team LeBron out on top. That's right. The events also celebrated Kobe Bryant's life after he, his daughter, and seven other people were killed in that helicopter crash last month. Fans applauded for 24.2 seconds to honor the Lakers legend. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver announced that the game's MVP award will be permanently renamed to honor Kobe. And fans continuing to share this incredible video from the uh, tribute, video tribute from Dr. Dre. Today is the last day fans can register to buy tickets to Kobe's memorial, which will be on the 24th. Fans will be notified if they've been selected tomorrow. In the game itself, uh, two Rockets, James Harden and Russell Westbrook, were on Team LeBron. They combined for 17 points. It was all tied up at the end of the third, and uh, Anthony Davis hit a game-winning free throw for Team LeBron to hit the target score of 157 to win the game. Westbrook and Harden danced with the Chicago <laughs> Scholars after the win. Team LeBron racked up $400,000 for the charity, so safe to say they got reason to dance. I know, they're very excited about that. Wow, congratulations to them. 646 now, you guys, uh, foggy out there. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, you definitely just have to make sure they're taking slow, and Eric's been tracking a few mm -hmm. issues. Yeah, especially, it seems like in Waller County on I-10, we've been looking at some of the traffic cameras out there. The fog is incredibly thick, quarter mile or less visibility, so definitely give yourselves plenty of extra time to get to where you're going this morning. Fortunately, though, We've had pretty light volumes on area roads. President's Day, not a lot of people heading out to work early this morning, so we're doing okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. a huge help. It's going to last for hours, so if you do have to work today, get your day started. Uh, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. We're going to see some improvements closer to 10 o'clock in the morning. So this is a live look from one of our cameras that's on top of a building. So, of course, you're up in the clouds, but the fog does extend all the way down to the ground. Temperature-wise, it's pretty mild out there, so we're waking up in the low 60s. It's going to be a warm, muggy, and breezy day. Day. You're visibly down to a quarter of a mile in Tomball, also in Katy. Uh, so far this morning, the southeast side of Harris County has been faring pretty nicely, but we're starting to see the visibility drop, and we're under that dense fog advisory for a few hours, so just allow yourself that extra travel time. Our north counties are not included, but Conroe, we're tracking some fog around the north freeway, so even take a little caution in Montgomery County and Walker County, despite the fact that you're not under that dense fog advisory. After 10 o'clock in the morning, we'll start to clear things up. Uh, don't expect a lot of sunshine, as I said mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures today 78 degrees, well above average for this time of year, and we could see a few showers touch off in the afternoon. If you get caught by one of the showers this afternoon, it's going to be light and annoying, nothing significant. A better chance of rain is moving into the forecast later on in the work week. We're tracking some snow showers in the Colorado Rockies. That's a weather system that's going to hop over the Rockies, move in our direction to drag a cold front through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Wednesday and Thursday, those will be the rainiest days out of the entire world.
work week as that cold front kind of lingers and then we have an upper level system pushing in from the west behind that weather system a douse of cold air so we're going from spring like weather to winter like weather all within a few days we're anticipating about an inch of rainfall for us here in Houston or North County is about two to three we can easily manage that so again no flooding threat but definitely a wet Wednesday and Thursday in the forecast and then behind that Eric you know it's, it's colder but at least we have beautiful sunshine heading into Mardi Gras weekend well, I can't complain about that. Uh, we always look forward to the weekend and hope for good weather there. Let's take a look at what's going on on area roadways now. This is uh, the Katy Freeway at State Highway 99. Things looking a little on the soupy side there. Take a look at the overall drive times that we've got happening. Uh, the Woodlands, 33 minutes, 28 minutes in from Kingwood. Overall, because we've got President's Day going on, traffic volume is pretty light. 18 minutes in from Pearland. That's the most significant delay, about eight minutes. That's because of construction. We do have the issue out in Waller County on on I-10, an accident still being cleared right near Brookshire, causing minor delays there. But overall, our morning drive is looking pretty good. If you're coming in from the east side, Baytown, 22 minutes, 13 minutes in from Laporte. And if you are coming in from the Clear Lake area, we've got a 26-minute ride in from Clear Lake to downtown. Back to you guys. Thank you, Eric. From work to school to home, it is nearly impossible to get around our sprawling city without a vehicle. We rely on them so heavily, so you really want your car to last as long as it possibly can. Yeah, so from filling up to routine maintenance, you may wonder, am I doing it right? Amy Davis is here to answer that question for all of us. All right, short answer is no. You know, there are a lot of drivers that are, do these things, five of them that could be causing major damage to their vehicles. This was pure neglect. Pure neglect is what Tony Zapoli says caused the engine to seize up on this Dodge Charger. The owner drove it 16,000 miles with no oil change. It's real bad, it'll be kind of sticky. Zapoli owns Advanced Auto Tech on Houston's southwest side. He says failing to take your car in for routine maintenance is one of the biggest mistakes drivers make. It keeps technicians like himself from catching problems before it's too late. We look the whole car over, check tire pressure, check top of all our fluids, and if there's something that's wearing out that could be dangerous, uh, cause it an accident, we need to point it out to the customer. If you routinely run your car on fumes well after that gas light comes on, you could destroy your fuel pump. It needs to stay submerged in the fuel or it can overheat. Replacing your fuel pump can cost about seven or $800. But that doesn't mean topping off your tank is any better for your car. Forcing the pump even after it stops is not good. You need that airspace expansion room. The fuel on the ground is cool. When it gets in the tank, it heats up and expands. When there's no room for the gas to expand, it can leak through your evaporative system, wasting gas and damaging those parts. And Houston's pitted and pocked roadways are problematic for vehicle suspension and our tires. If you can't avoid them, slow down. Go through them slow. If you don't pop a tire, you'll cause premature wear on bushings and ball joints at best. And lastly, Tony says you need to get your oil changed on the severe weather maintenance schedule. That usually means twice as often as your owner's manual says you need to have it changed. That's because of Houston's traffic and extreme heat. He said if you think about it when you're sitting in your car on 610 for an hour, you're not putting miles on it, but you're still putting wear and tear on your engine. That's so that's why. Point. So yeah. kind of maybe go backwards to the old 3,000 miles or whatever. Exactly. I'm pitching the high octane. I know we're right. not supposed to talk much, but anyway, I know. Yeah, you I know. I think of that. <laughs> Final check of traffic. Traffic and weather next year on Channel 2 News today, 652. 654, let's check in with the Channel 2 storm tracker this morning. Uh, rolling around town looking for a dense fog. There is a dense fog advisory in effect till 10. Britta and Eric will be along shortly. Other top stories this morning happening today. The memorial service for a Sugarland mother and son killed in their home. Well, that is happening today. The service for the Logan family will be held at 2 o'clock this afternoon at the River Point Church. SpaceX will launch 60 more Starlink satellites into orbit today. The Falcon 9 rocket will blast off just after 9 from Cape Canaveral. The Astros getting ready for their first full team workout today in West Palm Beach. Last week, it was the pitchers and catchers on the field, but now the entire team will be out there to practice, which starts at about 10 o'clock this morning. The Today Show is coming up next. Yeah, let's check in with our friend Craig Melvin live in New York to see what's ahead. Good morning. <laughs>
Hey, oh, and tonight, good to see both of you on a Monday morning. Coming up in just a few minutes here on today, uh, we will have the very latest on the weather situation, including, uh, but our big story, of course, the American tourists from that quarantine cruise ship finally arriving back in the States overnight. Uh, their journey home far from over. We're live at that military base in California with the very latest on their trip, their condition, and what's next for them. Also ahead, the worst flooding in decades ravaging the South. Mandatory evacuations underway, heavy rain not letting up. We are live in Mississippi this morning. And the new twist in the controversy over whether to recline or not to recline. A top airline official weighing in on the proper etiquette for passengers. The surprising thing that he says you should do and why some people are saying no way. We'll have that and more when we see you here in just a few minutes on today. Well, punching on a seat is definitely we'll not. Uh, yes. I know, I feel like that's... Never acceptable. No. We can all agree on that. Right? Exactly, that was just rude. All right, thank you, Craig. Let's go to Eric now with a check on the roads. Good morning. Good morning. The fog is the big issue this morning. Traffic volumes are light because of the President's Day holiday, but you can see where the yellow is, that's where the fog is the thickest, and it's throughout most of Metro Houston. We do report a uh, minor accident, 90, Crosby Freeway outbound toward Crosby. This is right at the San Jacinto River. This is reported on Google Maps right now. And we're still dealing with a little bit of a backup on the Katy Freeway out or inbound, I should say, at Brookshire. 12 miles per hour. We've got one lane blocked as they continue to clean up an accident. This is what we're looking at. This is the fog out there in Waller County. Definitely give yourselves plenty of extra time. We are crash free elsewhere around town. Seven minute delay in from Pearland. Overall, though, our delays are very minor on this President's Day holiday. Back to you. And we are waking up to the thick fog. Dense fog advisory is in effect through 10 o'clock this morning. It does not include our north counties, but Conroe, your visibility is already dropping. So take that extra caution even in Montgomery County, Washington County, Walker County. Uh, this is a live look at the coast where sea fog is causing an issue along seawall. Your visibility down to a quarter of a mile in some spots along the island. Our temperatures are mild. We're actually waking up in the 60s and this afternoon we will be topping off in the 70s. A few showers are possible if you get caught. Shouldn't be a huge deal. The best chance of rain actually for Wednesday and Thursday. And that system is bringing back winter. We're going from the upper 70s right back down to the 50s. Our favorite roller coaster ride. You know, it's just winter here in southeast Texas. And you can see it's still there on our 10 day. Kind of is what it is. All right. National Cabbage Day. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not I'll, I'll pass on that yeah. one. Uh, I'll talk to the river.